Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Troutman. Might makes Socrates wrong and makes Thrasymachus right. Might makes a Neo-Thrasymachus, a new Thrasymachus, a modern Thrasymachus correct in the argument that might, power, dictates the terms and conditions of the world of existence. Let's take power, let's take might, and describe it, for instance, as the ability to issue credits and debits on a computer screen, say, at the Federal Reserve, say, on Wall Street, at the major banks. Say, might and power have something to do with the ability to craft the economic narrative that sets the terms and conditions for life, sets the parameters for life, draws the boxes within which we think and eat and sleep and live and work. When the economic narrative, the prior philosophical conception of which was the art of living, the art of ordering your household, when that philosophy, when that narrative, when that directive is distorted and turned into a means of procuring extractions and exploitations over one another through living in and propagating a culture of lies, the narratives that we believe in, and those narratives result in drawing the lines, creating the boxes around when you're likely to have any experience in life and it draws the boxes around what kinds of experiences in life you're likely to have it draws the boxes around everything everything from societal wide culture to the individualized psychosocial relationships we have with ourselves and with various clusters of neurons that themselves have different goals that they want to realize through these bodies. So might, the ability to set credits and debits at the Fed and at the banks on Wall Street, the ability to craft an economic narrative that tells us what we are and describes human nature to us, this is in and of itself a major manipulation. The people who are in control of these narratives, of these credits and debits, can also pay for the enforcers of these narratives. Those elements of society that make these systems real. The baton over your head. The gun in your face. The pain compliance that is so dutifully doled out at protests so as to disperse and so as to really dissuade citizens from using their rights, from making use of their rights, from really believing in the meaning of their rights, of our rights, and certainly we are, we are seeing our oligarchs, our corporatocrats, those in power, those who have might, they have the ability to suppress any form of protest against these hegemonic structures, the structural violence and the intellectual violence that defines our everyday lives. Socrates was wrong if you give a modern Thrasymachus his due. A modern Thrasymachus would say, yes, Socrates, indeed, the children of those conquering tyrants will be slain by the angry populace that they have exploited and that they have maimed, that they have abused in so many ways. The retributions will be seen through by whether it be karmic swings of the pendulum or waves or cycles of oppression and revolution whatever explanation you prefer that is the 
standard argument that you may prosper for a while as a pure predator parasite, as Thrasymachus was modeling himself after those Homeric models of what heroism is, of what it means to be good, or of what it means to be, of what human nature is, and how it is manifested, and how it is enacted in in our lives, in our systems, in our societies, in our psychologies. It is no longer the case that your th those who come after you are fated and doomed to be uprooted and to be overthrown because a modern Thrasymachus would note that the technologies and the levels of enforcement, the, the amount of force and power, the amount of money that is put into enforcing these systems of intellectual violence, of structural violence, is so far dwarfing any, any amount of force that can be procured by the people. Sure, let us not take our guns away, let us organize amongst ourselves. Sure, let us realize our revolutionary capacities to whatever extent that may be. But the, the giants that we face, the multitude of powers that we face, and their many expressions and forms, perhaps could not have been anticipated by our ancient Thrasymachus. But today, we know conditioning. Today, we know that the billionaires are building for themselves the biggest life rafts they can because they know the disasters that they themselves are bringing upon us by virtue of running this economic system as it is through planned obsolescence and intentional waste we are destroying the living substrate that indeed is the the lifeblood of any conception of economy though we do not give it that credit we don't give oil that credit we don't give mega leaders of ancient sunshine that credit it is the it is our calorific capacity to burn all of this oil that really makes any of our modern conception of economy possible at all and without that we're going to see the reversions that we're already seeing the beginnings of these prototypical forms of techno feudalism neo feudalism wherein you have the enforcement of cruel and power-based orders imposed by enforcers, imposed by mercenary armies, imposed by the widespread distribution of distortions of community and distortions of individual psychology and the proliferation of algorithms that create all kinds of desperation and brokenness in the body politic of humanity such that it is dependent on its abusers. The modern Thrasymachus would have so much to say about the forms and expressions of power that are available to the oppressors and so much to say about the total impotence of m the vast majority of the modern citizenry as our powers have been reduced by the fact of our disaggregation, by the fact of our lack of community, by the facts of our culture wars and our non-recognition even of class wars by our lack of solidarity by our lack of togetherness we are made powerless and a modern Thrasymachus would have much to say about even amongst those of, of us who are fortunate to be whether it be institutionally formally or professionally educated the momenta that existed even just a few generations before toward 
securing and maintaining freedom, flourishing, felicity, and well-being is being outsourced to a conception of a free market that does not exist. We have outsourced all morality and ethics and all of our intellectual pursuits to profit at the expense of all else. That is what the fiduciary mandate to shareholders among publicly traded companies means. That is what it means to have these forever wars and the military industrial congressional complex doing everything it can to, in a bipartisan fashion, secure the hegemony of the US dollar through violence. Through violence and exploitation and extraction because that is what we are. We're violent exploiters and extractors and oppressors. We oppress ourselves, we have managers in our own brain who are introjects reflecting the directives of this distorted conception of economy. The ability to define the economic narrative, the ability to define the parameters of human nature, the ability to set credits and debits that consequently open up or, or close the flow of one's entire life based on what is available to them, based on what experiences one can have, based on what trainings or education one can or cannot have. A modern Thrasymachus is painfully correct about the, the shaping of narrative the shaping of available information, the shaping of humans through choice architecture and nudging and through systemic pathways of hypertension and diabetes and all sorts of cognitive malaise, all sorts of cognitive depressions, all sorts of cognitive exploits are being mined in individual humans. There are so many pathways to human brokenness without a paideia, without a directive and a cultural and communal goal towards the production of the ideal polis members. Without these orientations to the logos, if you will, without our orientations to the working mechanics of the universal order, without our orientations to thermodynamics, to science, without our orientations to rationalism, without our orientations to togetherness and to solidarity, we have outsourced human being to profit algorithms and psychogenic pathogenic algorithms. We have outsourced ourselves to machines and to philosophies most of us don't even know about or understand. We have outsourced ourselves to all kinds of frivolities and nonsenses because we have in some ways come to the conclusions of our frivolous, nonsensical existence but we need not write it into our psychologies and our cultures and our behaviors. We could do so much more for ourselves, but only by virtue of togetherness, only by virtue of orientation to systems of value that have at their core even the desire to be able to express ourselves as political animals. To be as free as an animal has every right to be. To be as unburdened as every animal has a right to be. And to do no more than we wish 
and then is necessary to procure housing, food, water, various forms of comfort and shelter. It should be in every way our human right to secure that for ourselves and to secure for ourselves ourselves and to secure for ourselves each other so that we can enjoy an existence. Imagine that. Flourishing and felicity. Wellness, flourishing, and felicity. These should be the primary directives, but they cannot be when we've outsourced everything to profit-generating and path pathogenic algorithms. A modern Thrasymachus finds himself correct because of all of the ways in which the body politic of humanity, whatever revolutionary forces we may bring to ourselves, we are so set apart. We are so burdened. We are so blind. We are so lacking for, for values, for philosophies, for orientation, for skills, for equipment, for collective, for organization. We are so lacking for those things that we need. A modern Thrasymachus is right, and Socrates was wrong because it was not by virtue of, of reason and dialectic that these things happened. It is by dialectic that the stories have been set in to secure the right of the pure predator parasites that we see in our corporatocrats and our oligarchs. This is their time. And they may yet be uprooted and we can prove Socrates right again. That might makes right is not the way forward. But for these people in their lifespan, for their aims, I'm not so sure when we've let it rain so long. And the reasons why engineered ignorance, engineered apathy, engineered desperation, engineered brokenness of so many kinds, and was a modern Thrasymachus right? And was Socrates wrong? I would like you to argue with me about this. I would like you to tell me if you think I'm wrong. If you think Socrates is still right. Tell me why. Respond to me in some way. Give me something to chew on. Right? Or let me know if you think that I'm right. And if it is the case that a modern Thrasymachus is right... How do we, those who consider ourselves, whether it be humanitarians or communitarians or those who wish for freedoms, even, how do we come together and leverage the makings, the machinations, the thinkings of a modern Thrasymachus to dispense with our oppressors? So thank you very much for listening. I think that might make Socrates wrong and a modern neo new Thrasymachus right. And I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. I'm not making comment on that. I'm saying that the Machiavellian approach, I'm saying that a realist approach that considers power, that considers hegemony, that considers the fact that you can have priors and axioms and precepts and the same data at the start and various actors will come to varying conclusions that will make it difficult to arrive at consensus. This is the reality in which we are living and this is why a modern Thrasymachus was right. A modern Thrasymachus was right because we are not a rational animal. We are not seeking the best arguments. We are seeking our resting states, our lowest energy states. And how is that achieved? But through securing the realist, power-driven, hegemonic understanding of exploitation and, and extraction. So thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you sometime. Maybe not soon. So. Socrates was wrong as he was on so many things.